Hello Internet, this is Kawa. Welcome back to Art of Insertion. Kawa Tester, in case you missed it, is a test character that I was using in the past for um, trying out things for Twitch. That's not working at the moment, so I'm not advertising that right now. I'll experiment more with that in the future, but for now, let's just play some more Judge of Crawlstone Soup, shall we? So, last time we survived the craziest thing possible in the craziest way possible. Still not sure how we did it, but I don't really care. So, let's go down, shall we? Okay, it looks like this uh, level is going to be one giant room or something close to it, and those are not fun. Okay. Come on. Okay, it's confused. That's good. There we go. That's sleep. Also good. Okay. Training stabbing and spell casting. So far, so good. Um, let's put on that jade ring. Ooh, that's not good. That's remove curse, that is good. Um we'll put back on the prod magic one and identify that later. You fall asleep, you die. Still haven't found the ecumenical temple yet. Still haven't found um an altar worth going to. Which is okay. I mean, it's fairly early on, only level 4, but it would be nice to have one earlier. Because such things are always nice. Okay, scroll up, identify. Almost dead, there we go. Dead. Good. So we're handling things much better than we were before. Those gnolls weren't much of a problem. Um, having Confuse on hand really helps with that. Lots of scrolls of identify some potions now to identify with them. Maybe we'll find one more potion before... Well, now let's go for it. Uh, we have so many of these anyway. That's a potion of brilliance. Read to that. That's a potion of heal wounds. Well, that's nice. Ooh, that hurt. There we go. That could have killed me. It's what I get for uh, not being cautious. So uh, that level was quick and fast. Let's test. One, two, three distinct stairs down. Yeah, that seems to be the level. Oh well, let's keep going. Move curse, very good. A robe that I won't need. So those two are hitting each other. There, you're confused too. Um, one thing is that if they are both confused and asleep at the same time, they'll actually sleepwalk. Uh, which is rather inconvenient. But it does mean they, are, they definitely won't attack you. And you'll still get the bonuses for stabbing. I seem not quite to be able to 
kill with a stab, so we'll have to keep training stabbing. Another one of my ghosts? Really? Okay, there. Hungry. Contaminated with magic. This, this can only end in tears. Let's rest here. Okay. That's fine. Um... We'll eat one of those bread rations. There. There! Destroyed. Very nice. Leave level 8, stabbing up. Stab you. Very good. And keep exploring. See if we find anything worthwhile. Okawadu. We can't wear much armor though. Um, so Oka um, provides a couple of abilities of heroic feats. And generally um, gives weapons and armor. But we can't wear much armor, so Oka isn't as useful to us as we'd think. Aw, oh, oh really? Well, there's a sign the RNG hates me. Um, I actually quite like Nemelex. Nemelex is a god of gambling and chance, and basically rewards you with abilities in order to handle special magical items which are decks of magical cards and different cards do different things and some of those things are very fascinating indeed there's ash and zari um i think our was our last run in ash and zari run i believe so um no no our, our last one was a kiku bakudka one that's right so ash and zari is the shackled. Ash and Zari exhorts followers to guard themselves with curses and provides rewards for time spent using cursed armor, jewelry, or weapons. Ash and Zari's ultimate desire is not for devotion but for the knowledge of all things. Pious worshippers willing to part with a portion of their knowledge will receive a greater portion of Ash and Zari's in return. Ash and Zari likes it when you explore, preferably while bound by curses, and when you obtain runes of Zod. This is an interesting option, actually. Um, the The downside is that we would not be able to switch between our dagger and our blowgun. And as we've seen before, our blowgun can be an absolute lifesaver. So I'm really torn. Um, it could go well or it could go very badly. And I, I'm, after what happened last time, I'm rather partial to that blowgun. So... Or just the idea of being able to switch to a blowgun when need be. So I I think we'll not deal with Ash and Zari this run. Which is a bit of a shame because Ash is a, a decent choice. It's just I don't think it's for us this time. Uh, so this is the way to the temple seems to be blocked but there should be a secret door as we can see very good so what do we have available to us as options this is some um some doesn't care some of bone dry humor is about right um, a wild and unpredictable god of chaos who seeks not worshippers but playthings with which to toy Many choose to follow Psalm in the hope of receiving fabulous rewards and mighty powers, but Psalm is nothing if not capricious. There's nothing a follower could do to influence Psalm's mood. That's not entirely true. Um, if he's, if, if Psalm is amused by you, you, you're likely to get better things, but way too risky. There's an entire, um, background called Chaos Knight that just starts you off as a follower of some. I'm pretty sure it exists purely for giggles. It's not something people take seriously. 
This is Fed Haas, who is all about um, plants and sacrificing fruit in exchange for things. The problem with that is that we only eat permafood, so I don't think that's a choice for us. Who's next? Ellie Villain, who is all about healing. Eh, not our style. This is Kiku Kupakudka. We've met Kiku before. What are. This is Makleb. Blood and Souls for Makleb. Vehement. Okay. Trog, the Berserker God. Um. Let me explain these two. Makleb is just pure destruction. Um. And can give you. F uh. In exchange for piety, summon monsters who may or may not be um, favorable to you. A little risky, but it's a very easy thing to do because all McLeod wants to see you do is kill things, which is fine and easy. And besides, blood and souls from McLeod. Blood and souls from McLeod. Vehement is interesting. Vehement is all about conjurations and destruction of magic. So, Ve gives lots of spell books and increases casting abilities. But we use our sword as much as we use our magic, so I don't think that's for us. And Zin, who is about purity and purification um, of things like mutations. So, I don't think any of these really fit us. I, I really don't. The closest I could think is either McCleb or Kiku. I really don't feel like running another Kiku run. Um, I really would have loved Nemelex. I, I've been really smitten with Nemelex lately. But until we find a scroll of blank... Do we know what blank looks like yet? No, we don't. We do have one unknown scroll. Actually, let, let's do something. No, it's immolation. Hmm. Let's drop some things off. Um, that and that. Yes. If we pick up more scrolls, let's see if we can- Oh, here's Seif, who is the other god of magic, who basically just gives spell books and nothing else ever. Let's eat that orange. Let's read. That, that's a scroll of blinking. That's a ring of hunger. I'll drop that. Screw it. I'm gonna go worship Nomalex. If I survive this. There we go. Whew. There. And as a bonus, that orc can't get to me right now. So, Nemelix. Nemelix is a strange and unpredictable trickster god whose powers could be invoked through the magical packs of cards painted at the Ecor of Demons. Followers are expected to sedulously sacrifice valuable items, the type of which will influence the gifts. Followers are also advised to trust the cards and use them as much as possible. However, the trickster can ensure that fortune favors the bold. So, Nemlex likes it when you draw cards and use up decks, and when you sacrifice items. Um, you can sacrifice anything to Nemlex. And the decks that Nemelix gives you are dependent on what you sacrifice. So we will join this religion. And soon you will see exactly what I mean.
Okay. There. So, let's not pick up the blowgun, let's pick up the needles. So, when I pray, I offer a prayer to Nemelex. The uncursed orcish blowgun disappears without a glow. The symbol of destruction coalesces before you, then vanishes. Nemelex is non-committal. So I've basically turned the tide in my favor slightly towards getting a deck of destruction. How about for this corpse? This time it's a symbol of summoning. So whatever symbol comes up is a different kind of deck. And different decks will give different things. So this one's also summoning. We'll pick that up actually. Uh, we'll confuse you. Make you fall asleep. Oh, how did I miss? Eh, I feel like going up anyway. Okay. So actually, a rainbow of weird colors and disappears. So so that one had some value. Um, different glows will, um, I think correspond to different levels of usefulness, um, of piety. So we'll keep sacrificing and hopefully something good will show up. And I don't have to do this manually. Actually, I can very easily, oh, there's a centaur around, wherever it is. I will take that potion of curing quite gladly though, and that potion of brilliance. Confused. Dead. I don't need any of this. So we get all sorts of things, and Nemlex gives us a gift. Right now it is a plain deck of cards, and we don't have any abilities from Nemlex to use it. Let's actually, uh, well, sacrifice that. Go upstairs. So right now, without any Nemlex abilities, we can wield it, then evoke it. And we've drawn frost. Let's point it that way. And it gives a frost bolt. So every time I draw, I'll get something out of this. No idea what it is just yet. Let's switch back to our dagger and keep going around. doing various things. So from here, actually, we can explore. And now that we have um, this ability with Nemlex to sacrifice things, every time we explore, we'll stop on random items as well when we didn't stop on them before, which is pretty handy. I definitely want a, um, well, first of all, I want to be very much in favor with Nemlex, because the more I am, the better decks I'll get, and the better luck I'll have with the cards. But I also want a deck of summoning, because summoning is really hard otherwise, and Okay, so I've picked up a new um, power. Let's look at that. So instead of manually holding the deck in my hands and then drawing one with a Vogue, I could just draw one directly, which is pretty handy. Um, it's a nice start to not have to unwield my dagger. It's pretty excellent. But there will be better ones soon, I promise. Uh, let's keep exploring. And I, I, I can literally just spend some time clearing out my inventory, basically. Well, clear, clearing the floor, really. Everything in my inventory is probably useful. Uh, so 
yeah, um, in other roguelike news, while I'm doing this, the seven day roguelike challenge has been announced. Which means that... Oh! Stabbing's already at level 9. Let's turn that off, actually, for now. I think that's enough stabbing for now. And... Hmm... We still have some hunger on Confuse, so I can afford to read more, uh... to, to learn more, more spell casting. Let's also see if we can't memorize invisibility. Nope. Actually, you know what? Push it to brilliance. Try it now. There we go. Um, just so we get it out of the way. So it has a failure level of 52%, which is completely unacceptable and an extremely high hunger cost. And this is even with the extra intelligence that we got from that temporarily from that potion of brilliance so yeah it's gonna take us a while before we can really cast oh speaking of abilities nemlex allows us to peek at two cards which costs us some some points in piety let's describe that discard one card from any deck in your inventory draw two from the deck, look at them, and shuffle them back in. The deck will be inscribed as containing these two cards, and if they are different, this will identify the deck automatically. Which is pretty nice. Um, it's an easy way to identify, and, you know, much less of a hassle than have actually having to activate. Um, that Brilliance Potion has worn off. Let's see uh, what it actually takes. Yeah, our failure rates are terrible. Look at that. So we will we will get better at that over time. Come on. Um. But yeah, the seven day roguelike has been announced recently. Um, it will be happening sometime in late February or early March. And the general concept is that over the course of a week, various people will be making their own roguelikes. Um, these are usually not, you know, the next net hack or the next dungeon crawl stone soup or something. They, their scope is small. And, you know, they're often just small experiments in creating your own video game, basically. But it's an interesting challenge in the way that, um, for those of you who are familiar with it, National Novel Writing Month, or NaNoWriMo, um, is. It's kind of a... just sort of a strange and interesting, hectic world where everyone's just creating games for the sake of creating games, which is pretty which is a pretty exciting concept. So, um due to various real world commitments and, you know, just a general lack of ideas, I don't think I myself will be participating. But if you're interested at all in learning to program, in learning about video games, in any of that, I highly encourage you to participate. And one thing I will do, probably do is uh, I will probably do something much like my fellow roguelike let's player, the Uber Hunter, does, which is to basically attempt to play every single one. That, fi that is finished at the end of the seven days. Which is a little crazy, but a lot of them are very short and, you know, very interesting, certainly. But, but, but short. Um, and that in and of itself should be an interesting experience. So, I'm pretty excited for it. Oh. Let me 
finish off Doan and Duvesa. So these are a pair of sibling elves. Doan casts spells and Duvesa is a fighter. And if you kill one, various effects happen to the other. So Doan dies, Duvesa weeps then writes herself and shakes her weapon and she goes berserk. Now the berserk will wear off. Um, and then she'll be slowed and all of the other bad things that happen when someone is done berserking. So right now I just kind of want to avoid her. See? Come on. Uh oh, now she's more energetic. Now this is a problem. Why are you resisting so well? Let's cough your wounds. Let's cough brilliance. Swap weapons? Okay, that that should that should do it. That doesn't do it. There we go. So we got a scroll of teleport, we got one of our needles back, we got a short sword here, a ring mill that we can't use. Let's sacrifice those to Nemlex in hopes of getting another deck. Let's pick up this dagger and see what it does. No idea. It could be better than the plus two plus one we're currently wielding, though. That would be one small comfort, at least. I was kind of hoping for some sort of property, but no such luck. There's a robe and a corpse here. We'll sacrifice those. There's another scroll of identify here. Okay. Some of our effects are fading away. There we go. So that's that level. Let's do one more level before I call it for the day. This must be the jelly we ran into earlier. Kind of cool that we ran into him while he was dead asleep. Oh, you're conf or you're already confused. Very nice. Potion of curing, some extra gold. We will. Oh god! I was about to say we will check out the shop soon, but uh. Looks like we have some other things to care for first, and this is another open level which makes this harder. Um. Oh dear. I don't like open levels, they, they make me nervous. Um, because it's much harder to pin a single person down. Twyev's Assorted Antiques, we'll definitely check that out. Antique shops are interesting because they know about as much about the items as you do. So you'll have these unidentified weapons and armor and things that could be really amazing and could be really awful and you'll find them at very cheap prices. But of course that comes with, you know, the fact that they could be really terrible. It's like thrift shopping for Dodger Crawl Stone Sue. I don't like this. I don't. I do have some potions of curing though. Um, I have some unknown ones. Let's find out what that is actually. Uh, this potion of might. And you know what? Let's try evoking some of these decks. Um, oh god. What 
happened there? Uh, so that was the fire vitriol unaffected, unaffected by the. So who hit me so hard? Probably one of the gnolls. Mm. I'll pick up that. Set up the stairs and rest and take another set of stairs down, just like last time. I'm sorry if that's extremely boring to you, but it's a necessary tactic a lot of the time. Oh. Did that jelly just eat that scroll? Yes. Yes, it did. Oh, that's sad. That's very sad to me. gonna die are you there huh pick up dart get rid of that pew restored magic restored Use you. Another unlabeled scroll. Pikel. Oh, great. So the slaves, the slaves can hurt, but the big thing about the slaves is that um, they don't do, um, they don't give any experience. And honestly, I just feel kind of guilty uh, killing them. And what if you kill Pico without killing the slave? Um, whatever slaves are remaining, I should say, will work for you for free. So, um, let's go in here. Uh, grab one of the, uh, poison, potion of confusion and, and of poison just to know what they are. Actually, yeah. Um, restore abilities, agility, magic. Heal wounds, heal wounds. And we'll save up for that potion of gain intelligence. So the shopping list is kind of cool. So now that, that item is part of my shopping list. And I can access my shopping list at any time and select an item from my shopping list to travel to that shop. It's a pretty handy feature. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Oh, this was also a bad choice. Oh, this was a terrible choice. What what am I doing? Oh god. Um Okay, Blork the Orc is confused at least, so he's Wherever I end up. Come on, die. There. Okay. Rest. Can I rest? Yes. Screw you, I'm going up the stairs. How are these slaves so able to resist, you know confusion spells. I just want to confuse all of you so that you don't attack me while I focus on Pykel. Is that so much to ask? Ugh, and now I'm out of magic! Um... I hate these levels, I hate being easily surrounded, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this so much. Okay, 
Gain some gold, some potions. Okay, at least I killed something. Please fall asleep. Yes! Ha! Ha! With Pykel's spell broke with the former slaves, thank you for their freedom. Spellcasting to level 10, evocations to level 1, reached level 9. Increase ability strength. From now on, I shouldn't really have to increase strength much more, but eh, we'll see. Um, from now on, I think I'm going to focus on int, because extra int will prevent stuff like all those confusion misfires. Uh, let's sacrifice all that stuff. And these, so these slaves are peaceful, and uh, they're happy, and they'll attack things, you know, on the level, instead of having me do the work. So that's kind of nice. Oh man, that was stressful. And it does not help that the next level is going to feature Blork the Orc. Blork is an orc who knows magic. It's not fun. Okay. There's a deck of cards here. That's kind of awesome. So I'm going to put that on my list, and that wand too, I will pick that up. Put all of those on our list as well. Very good, very good. So as I said, every time I press uh, um, the dollar sign, this list will come up of all the things on my list and I can pick any one of these and go there just like auto travel which is pretty handy and no I cannot um just sacrifice this um I cannot what was I trying to say I cannot sell things to the shop that's why I'm not holding on to things which I kind of like because it means that, you know, you're not hoarding things for the sake of hoarding them in this game, which is pretty nice. Everything that you, you have in your inventory is something you feel you can use. Um, speaking of which, let's use that identify scroll, find out what that is. Pushing a speed, quite nice. Here's another general store. The only thing I can afford here is the pair, and I will take it. Let's, uh, unholy creation. What does that do? Draws unformed lumps of flesh from the abyss to create a terrible beast. It sounds like it will probably kill me. But I probably should have that scroll just know what it is. Uh, the lamp summons fire elementals. That doesn't sound good to me. Um, we'll do heal wounds. Identify... I already have a ring of regen. I don't need the stones. Enchant armor and a wand of slowing. That all sounds good. So let's uh, put all those on our list too. And as we find more money and can afford such thi such uh, such luxuries, we'll hopefully get them. Those priests are annoying. Baog is a spiteful god if you're not an orc. Ooh, another deck! Uh, let's... Oh, and we picked up another ability in the process. Um, this one is draw three cards from any deck, look at them, and decide which one to keep discarding the other two. That's pretty cool. Um... Let's peek at our new, um, our new deck, though. It's also a deck of destruction. Oh well, um, not a bad thing. Uh, we've been sacrificing mostly weapons anyway, so that makes a lot of sense. Whew! 
man we have done a lot so far and we have had another epic battle there is one ahead of us down here on level seven where we will have to deal with blork the orc so i think i'm going to call it here for this episode and uh will i survive against blork the orc find out next time bye